Hello and welcome to Power Players. I'm David Curley from ABC News and we are joining you today from the Air and Space Museum here in Washington, D.C. to talk about an orbital perspective. It's a new book by former astronaut Colonel Ron Guerin who joins us. Colonel, thanks very much for joining Thank us. Thank you, David. You spent a lot of time in space. You were on a mission on the space shuttle and then you spent some time on the space station. What is it like to be out there looking back? Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing experience. There's lots of aspects of it that I think are really unique. You know, one is obviously that you're floating or in a weightless or a microgravity environment. But I think the overriding uh, emotion is, comes from seeing the planet from space, so seeing that perspective, seeing the only home you've ever known, and seeing it in a way that gives you this feeling that you're detached from it. You know, th you're, you're looking from the outside in, and it really changes your perspective. The weightlessness, um, I guess, makes it a little bit easier to get around, harder to get around. Tell me about day in, day out yeah, life. Harder and easier at the same time. Some things are harder, some things are, are easier. You know, if you set something down, it's not going to stay there. It's going to go yeah, floating I'm off. So you, there's a propensity to lose space things space uh, space in space yeah. because of weightlessness. But uh, it gives you a freedom that you really don't have on the Earth. If I want to work on something on the floor, I don't have to bend over. I could just flip upside down and turn the ceiling into the floor or the floor into the ceiling. It really opens up a whole new uh, existence. I think a lot of us think that you know a trip into space for a few days or a week would be a lot of fun. Uh, you got a six-month mission on space station. It gets kind of old pretty quickly? You know, I don't think it does. I think the, the, the environment there is, is absolutely wonderful. We try and pack a lot of work into each work day because it's, you know, it's very expensive to send people to space and we want to get the most out of them. So I think from that point of view, you're, you're ready for a vacation when, when that's all over because it really is a lot of hard work. But the living itself, you know, one of the things that I, that I think would surprise people is just how wonderful it is to live in space. Um, that freedom that, that you get from, from you know, living in a three-dimensional world. And, and again, you never get bored with looking out the window and seeing our beautiful planet. You did six months in the station. Scott Kelly's ready to go up and do a year right, right. in the space station. Uh, would be the longest time an American has American. spent in space. But it's also science. We're going to learn a lot, right? We are. So, you know, that's one of the things. We're trying to push the boundaries of what, what the human body is capable of doing. And, and, and you know, if we want to go to Mars, if we want to start to explore the solar system, we, we need to answer these questions. You spend time on spacewalks as well as in the space station. You look back at this Earth. You say it changed your perspective. How did it change what you wanted to do with the rest of your life? You really get hit in the gut with this sobering contradiction between the beauty of our planet on one hand and the unfortunate realities of life on our beautiful planet for a significant portion of its inhabitants. And when you pull back to this, this big picture perspective, you know, a lot of the differences we have, a lot of the problems that we have kind of blur into insignificance. It really fills you with this, this sense that you, this refusal to accept the status quo on our planet and to, and to try and work towards or nudge our global society towards making life as beautiful as our planet lo looks from space. We're here at the Air and Space Museum, we see the Soyuz and the right. Apollo right. Um, that you know, years bef a few years before you went into space as an Air Force fighter jet pilot, the Russians were your enemy, and all of a sudden you're in space together with the Russians working together. I think that never hit home harder than when I was at the base of the Soyuz rocket on the night we were going to launch into space, looking up at this beautiful rocket on the same launch pad that Yuri Gagarin launched from 50 years prior. It was on the anniversary, and I look up and I see an American flag and a Russian flag on there. And uh, having trained the first 15 years of my adult life to fight the Russians, you know, the contrast of that really struck me. If we could set aside our differences, find common ground, in this case space exploration, and start working on those things together, you know, it, imagine if we apply that same level of cooperation and collaboration to the, to the other things, the other problems facing our planet. But you're talking about places on the planet where people don't have fresh water. Right, exactly. I think there's a lot of applications, not just from the space technology. You know, we, we recycle all our water on, on the space station, and we turn yesterday's coffee into today's coffee. And so a lot of that technology can transfer to developing communities around the world. But I think more important that, or equally as important, is just the fact that we work together, that we as nations, as people, as citizens of different countries, came together for a big, grand uh, accomplishment. If there was one problem you could solve right now on the planet, what would it be? Uh, I think the one problem I would solve is, is an over-focus on the short term, on looking at, at Band-Aid fixes, on, on quick fixes, uh, and to, to shift to a perspective that looks not just at a longer term view, but a bigger picture term. How does this not affect this village? How does it affect the region? How does it affect the continent? And how does it affect the continent over the next 50, 100 years, not the next five months? Colonel Ron Guerin, thank you very much for joining oh, us. Thank you, David. And thank you for joining us on Yahoo Power Players. I'm David Curley from ABC News. We'll see you the next time.